Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Tor Olson, software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and today we're going to be taking a look inside of Adobe Photoshop at one of our long-standing but recently updated plugins, Tunit 3.0. Tunit is a plugin that gives your photos that popular cartoon appearance, and it has a lot of options for customization for different styles and looks, whether they be illustrated pencil drawings or impressionist paintings. Tune has a lot to offer, but in this tutorial, we're just going to go over the basic comic book look, the parameters that go behind it, and what you can do to those parameters for your specific photograph to make it look a lot better. So let's dive right in, shall we? So we're going to start off with some faces, because Tunit works really well with faces and portraiture. And we have these two beautiful ladies that we're going to be tunifying. And the first thing we're going to have to do is select our layer down here. It's already selected since it's the only layer that we have active in this project. And from here, I'm just going to go to our filter drop down menu to Digital Anarchy and select Tune It, which will open the UI. So, one of the first things we need to recognize when we're using Tune It is that all the effects are resolution dependent. And one of the things that happens in the UI when your zoom control is less than 100% is that there is some interpretation going on with this graphic here. So if you were to edit your photograph entirely in, I don't know, say 50% of the zoom control, you're not going to be getting an accurate uh, representation of what your photograph looks like. So in this case, we're going to have to zoom in to 100% to see truly what our effect looks like. And so this is Tunit's basic effect. Uh, this is actually a pretty good vantage point. We get to see some of the edges that are happening in her hair, as well as some skin, how Tuna is dealing with it and blending its colors together. And for those of you who are just getting into Tuna for the first time, or for those of you that just want a quick overview of the plugin, a great way to start is by looking at the preset manager. Here you have a bunch of different presets that utilize a whole bunch of different styles and effects combinations. We can actually just go through a few of them here, I think. Just to give you an overview of what styles do, what the algorithms for each style does, as well as which effects accomplish the certain look that each preset has. So there's some cool ones in here that are just part of the stock. And in the future, we may go over some of the other styles and effects that enable us to accomplish really cool looks like this, kind of a almost impressionist painting look. But for now, I'm just going to hit reset. You can hit reset at any time, and it will bring you back to the baseline comic book effect. So for this baseline effect, the comic book effect, there's really three components that are going into creating it, which is the style selector or the baseline algorithm. This is the way in which we're interpreting how our image is going to be shown from the get-go. We have our blur, which is determining how all the colors are being shown, how they're being blended together, blurred or sharpened. And finally, outlines, which is using edge detection to find out where our edges are and applying some lines accordingly. But I digress. Let's start from the get-go uh, with the baseline algorithm that our photo is being put through. There are several different algorithms that we can select. Uh, we're going to go over flat shaded for this tutorial. In this case, the biggest parameters to look at are flatness and simplicity. And for the sake of the tutorial, it's probably best to go over simplicity first. Simplicity is controlling how much color detail we're keeping in the image. Now, because we're on the higher end of the spectrum for the slider, we're going to have less detail and a flatter appearance in all of our colors. So we're going to have a more of a cartoon appearance. If I were to take the simplicity and drag it down, we're going to have a more complex image. So if I were to bring this down to, I guess, let's say about six or so, you're going to see we have a little bit more detail, some more edges in the, in the different brightnesses and shades that we have going on in her face. Here there's a little bit more texture to the face, the hair, and the clothing. 
You can see the contours of her neck and the different depths of color value in her chin. If I were to bring this simplicity back up again, we can see that a lot of those segments of color in her face and her nose, they kind of disappear. So we see a more gradual, flatter look, which is what we want to go for if we want to create a cartoon. So the other part of the flat shaded algorithm is the flatness, which has to do with the smoothness of transition between different colors. So while here we have a low flatness, so we're getting to see the gradual transition between colors such as her eyebrow over to her skin. If I were to crank this up, we'll see that the detail in all those shadows becomes a lot more defined. It'll probably be most apparent, yep, in her eyebrow, you can see we have a lot more of a crisp definition between the brown of her eyebrow and the shadow that's created by it and the rest of her skin tones. And this gives us a little bit more of a comic book look. The shadows are not as gradual the way they would be in real life. They're a lot more extreme. You can see that also around the other model's chin, as well as in her hair. You're seeing the bright highlights are definitely distinct from the shadows and the mids. So that's what's really going on in the baseline algorithm. Um, I'm not gonna, I like how the simplicity is at 20 right now, but for the flatness, since we want a bit of a cartoon look um, and not those seamless transitions between different colors and shades, I'm gonna bring the flatness maybe about to 30, somewhere in between where we had it and what the default is. So that's got a bit of that look that we want, that cartoon look. Now for the blur, uh, the higher we turn up the radius or the threshold, the more of those details are going to be lost in the blur and the less edges we're going to be able to detect. So if I turn the radius up, you'll notice that a lot of these lines that we're seeing in the hair and in the eyebrow, maybe some of her uh, pores here, if I turn that up, a lot of those will be going away. So as you can see, having a stronger blur is going to get rid of a lot of the definition that we had, maybe eliminate some of those edges. So radius is really increasing just the area of our blur, how wide that area is. Our threshold is looking at how much of the image we want to blur. Instead of the area of our blur being expanded like it is with radius, threshold is telling how much of the frame needs to be blurred. So in areas where there's a lot of density in between edges are being affected more. So if I were to crank up threshold, you can see that now her sweater has less of those detailed lines that we had than before, as well as some of the lines in her, the dimples in her cheeks are gone now. But I kind of like having all that definition in her sweater. I'm gonna turn that back to about 15. Maybe even a little lower than that. Oh, that looks good. So now that I got kind of the look in the shadows and everything that, to add the dimension to our model's face, I probably wanna go in to our outlines and affect how our lines are being sculpted for that comic book effect. And just as a frame of reference, I'm actually gonna turn off those comic book lines just to show you what it looks like without those defined edges. And now you can see we're getting a completely different look and feel in which it looks like the entire photograph was painted, which is not a bad look, um, but not necessarily the one that we wanna go for in this tutorial. I can also just show the outline itself to show you the other side of the spectrum. And I'm just gonna keep this here just to show off how the parameters are working within the outlines. The first of which is sensitivity. Sensitivity is telling Tunit the degree to which it should be looking for edges in the picture. If I were to crank this down, we'll see that a lot of those edges in the hair. So in this case, I might maybe wanna crank it up to 75. The default was 60. That's good, right there. So now we're getting the details of her nose and the subtleties of her facial features as well as the crinkles un underneath her eyes. This is really a great way of keeping the detail in the face enough so that you can tell what expressions are being shown. Strength is actually fairly similar to thickness. Thickness will just uh, increase overall the thickness of all of the lines that we have Strength is really going to have an effect only on where the edges are most apparent, say on the edge of her face, or on the chain of the other model's necklace. 
If I were to bring that down to, let's say, 45, just about, you're going to see that while we're still retaining all of the edges that are most obvious, some of the more subtle ones in the hair are kind of coming back a little bit. We're seeing a little more white. I actually liked it where it was originally. So we're going to bring that back to 60. If I wanted to make some of these dimples more apparent, I could take the thickness and maybe bring it up to a value of 4. You really don't want to overdo this one. So here all of our edges are very apparent. You can have all these details and the eyes and the dimples. So from here I think I have a look that I like. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off outline only. And here I have an effect I really like. We don't have our colors all smooth together so much that we're losing, say, the highlight in her eye. And we've added some outlines on top of the entire composition to get the details in her face that we might have otherwise missed. So I really like this look. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this will bring us back into the UI for Adobe Photoshop, our bar here for our progress with the render is going. And for those applications to tune it with a painterly effect, um, those renders are going to take a little bit longer, especially if you have a very high resolution picture like we do here. Now let's say, let's say I wanted more lines in her hair. Maybe I don't like the way it looks right now. Uh, I think there could be a little more detail in all the outlines in her hair. To give it a little more texture, I can actually go back into our filter for Tune It, and all of the previously saved settings that I had for the blur, for the outlines, and for our algorithm are all still there. And from here, I can actually zoom back in. So from here, I'm going to go to our outlines. Maybe we want to have a little bit less, or a little bit more sensitivity, maybe something like 86. Let me bring down the thickness a little bit since I know it's going to be a little bit more busy now. And there is the effect that I want. In which case I can hit, go ahead and click OK again. And what's great about this ability by Tunit to remember all of your parameters from the last iteration you had open. If you're trying to batch render a bunch of photographs at once, Tunit will just apply the same effect to all of those photographs. As well as being good for when you want to make some tweaks like we did right here. And that's really all there is to it. We've very quickly and very easily been able to take a photograph and by making some small tweaks here and there with our algorithm, our blur, and our outlines, we were able to make a really cool cartoon image that is very convincing with very little effort on our part. Additionally, as of Adobe Photoshop CS6, where they implemented video compatibility, you can also apply all the effects you want to video. So in this case, I had uh, original video of this guy surfing. I thought it would be really cool if we tunified him. So I went ahead and did that here. I brought down the strength and the sensitivity of the line so that we would really only have one along the edge of the wave, maybe along the caps to give some more definition. And from here, it was able to create a really cool effect. It just looks like an animated cartoon. From here, I could just go to File, Export, and render our video to choose the format, resolution, etc. So it's a really cool thing to do with your photos and your videos to be able to turn them into cartoons or impressionist paintings or illustrations. And if you'd like to do any of those things, you can go to digitalanarchy.com where we have free trials of this software as well as many others and other free stuff just for your enjoyment. Again, I'm Tor Olson, Software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.